Hello everyone and welcome back to some more coverage of Bardsung Tale of the Forsaken Glade which is currently, at the time you're seeing this I believe, or just about to be, crowdfunding and there will be a link to the campaign in the description box below. And today we're going to do a playthrough of the demo slash prototype build that Steamforge sent to me um, using the components they gave that I did an unboxing of already. So just a quick few things to note. One, these are all prototype versions, they are not necessarily the finished product, so please keep that in mind. Doubly, that goes for the rulebook, which at the, this point is not complete, subject to change, so not necessarily reflective of the actual finished rule set, but close to it at the very least. Uh, three, I'm going to be blathering while we're playing, obviously. I can't guarantee I'll remember absolutely everything. I will tr certainly try, but do not expect this to be 100% perfect or a how to play or anything like that. Look to Steamforge directly for that kind of content. And uh, finally, because this is a one-shot delve, where the goal is to get from the starting tile, which is right here, to the other end of the table, at the top end of the camera there, it's not part of a larger campaign since this is just a demo. Uh, I'm not going to do the treasure bag mechanic, which is how you get additional loot uh, for when you're playing a full campaign, just to keep things a bit simpler, since this is just a one-shot delve. I did put the treasure tokens down and randomise them, as you are supposed to for setup, just to show that. And then there's also the Wandering Monster tokens, four of them with the starting tile and the echo token, which is a little bit different this time around. If I land on one of those treasure tokens, rather than getting tokens you would put in a treasure bag, I'm just gonna draw a treasure card so we can see what treasure looks like in this version of Bardsung. That is not how you're supposed to do it in the full thing, so I'm just making that clear. Let's go look at the three characters I'm gonna bring and go over how they work. So I've basically taken a tank, I have close combat damage dealer and then kind of like a mid-range status effect and damage dealer. And over here you can see the party supplies. Again, since this is a one-shot delve, I'm going to be pretty spend happy with these, like campfires to get rid of bleed and replenish fate, I think. Healing potions are for if someone actually dies, it gives you a do-over, because if someone dies, you're done. Um, you can open up blocked passageways with those. And the charms, I think that replenishes fate, actually. I think that's the one that replenishes it. So, Skull Splitter has three fate. Fate is now character-specific rather than party-specific which you can spend to do special moves. They're level 1 heroes in the full game, you'd be able to level up skills to get better, same as in the original Bard Sung. Each one of these characters has a passive, uh, active ability, which is a bog standard attack, and then one that usually costs one fate to use. They also have a passive, which is how they regenerate their fate. So for instance, Skull Splitter, if he successfully gets hit, if he fails his defense roll, a uh, spent fate gets flipped back over. So he has a frenzied passive, once per round you can spend fate to do an, a an attack, which is a way to circumvent the you're only allowed to use each ability once per turn rule. His Whirling Dervish is the basic attack, it just shows you what range you attack at, what you roll for damage, and when you're rolling to hit, which is on 2d6, if there's any modifier to help you, then what happens if you just get a hit, and what happens if you get a crit. Simple as that. Only difference for the finisher move he's got is that it's more likely to do damage, and it costs a one of his fate to use. Moving along, this is one of the characters I'm, I'm very certain I used her in, in Bardsung. She didn't look like this, she looks cooler now. She has a fire goat, but this is Fire Soul. She only has two fate according to her card, at least that's how I've interpreted that. If one or more enemies are defeated in the end phase by the burn condition, which she loves giving out, that's how she gets back her fate, outside of doing any of the party abilities. Give me fire as her passive once per round after missing an attack, you can use fate just to inflict the burn status effect to set someone on fire out of spite which then might also feed into just getting a refund on what you spent her basic attack is ember and conflagration is the one that costs to spend it doesn't have a crit condition but it does set people on fire so there's that and then we have our tank which is dawn guard also two fate stalwart once per round of dawn guard is attacked and passes her defense roll you get fate back. So she passes a uh, defense roll, she gets it back. If she wants to just utterly ignore an attack that's hitting her, that's where a passive shield of faith comes in. You can spend fate just to say, no, that attack didn't actually happen. So that's pretty cool. Shield bash for a basic hit. It makes her move as well, I believe. And righteous zeal, which also does one to the attack roll for each wound you have. Oh yeah, your wound stats are, all, are part of the stats up here. It's the flag, it's how many wounds you can take before you're considered defeated. In terms of the other stats on here, it's just how many you move, any bonus you get to defense rolls, how much fate you have, and the trait they use for um, challenge cards that they're particularly adept at. 
over the right side of the table here, I've got the treasure deck, I've got the AI deck for the enemies, narrative, wound cards, uh, initiative cards in the Wandering Monster deck that I've already shuffled, but I'll shuffle again once we need them on camera. And then to the right of the table that you can just about see is where I've got the other deck of cards you'll need, which is the trail cards, clearing cards, aspect challenge, aspect battle. So with that, we're going to jump in and try and win. So when you start, you have your three heroes, or up to five if you're playing with that many people, on this starting tile here, and it's classed as a trail, so you're going to be going into a clearing first of all. You start around by shuffling everyone who's in the initiative deck, so currently there's no enemies obviously, so it's literally just the three characters I'm playing as. This just decides the turn order uh, for the round that you're doing. In a round, or rather when you activate a character, you can do two things, you can move, you can use an ability or you can do an explore. You can do two of each thing, so you could move, move. You can do two abilities as long as they're two different abilities. And explore is just how you populate the board. Again, very similar to the original Bard Sun if you played that. So I've shuffled this, I'll just do it on camera here since we're immediately going to do an explore, so I'm going to have to go look out tiles anyway. So Dongar goes first, Fire Soul second, Skulls Blur. Although if we find enemies, we have to add them into this initiative order and the cards for them like for example here's the basic stabber their back looks the same so that's why same with the wandering monsters as well so this all counts as a single zone so it doesn't matter the dawn guards over here uh, I'm gonna go roughly to the left just because the lighting's a little bit better on this side so her first action when she activates is she's going to do an explore of here which means we need to resolve I'm just gonna move them to the side a clearing card and depending on what it is, well, it's going to have a bunch of stabbers on it. That's what it's going to have. So that token there means it has to be where we enter from. If that isn't there, you can orientate the tile however you like. It tells you where enemies are. And because this is secondary wolf rider, I believe that means in one of the attached trails, which are going to be here and here, he's going to spawn in. I'll double check that because there's also tertiary spawns that can happen. I think a wolf rider is kind of nasty so I'm not sure we got entirely lucky there but uh, I'll be back with this setup. So I have set up the tile that we got here however there was two trail exits to cover. I just drew those off camera just to try and get it done. This is the one I drew for the exit down here however placing that in any manner would send it off the table which means you just put down a dead end. It's a path you can't follow anymore. The one up here, though, is definitely our route to go forward. Placed it like that, although if I wanted to, I could have placed it like that because it didn't say you had to place it any particular way. And for secondary spawns, you put it on every trail that's attached to the clearing you just explored. So thanks to that dead end, there's just the one. So there's now a wolf rider, which is a nasty enemy, right in there. And the person who explored counts as entering. So Dawnguard is here. Last thing to do is to draw a aspect a battle, sorry, which is something that is unique for just this fight. Pit Trap. Well, this hero makes a defense roll. If they fail, they suffer a wound, and I think that's stun. Okay, well, of all the characters to have to do a defense roll to immediately start, Dongard is probably the best. I'm going to go double check if her modifier is allowed to be applied for this because she has a two modifier, just to see. Hopefully, it is. Alright, thankfully she does get that 2 bonus. So defense roll in this game is just 2d6, which is also how you see if you hit someone now it's no longer in a d20, thank goodness. So, we're adding 2 to this, which is just as well, because that would not have been enough. 6 plus Dawn Guards 2 is 8, and I believe since the Pitfall Trap card didn't have a specific target number on it to meet, you go by the highest one of the enemies present in the fight, which would be the Wolf Riders at 8. So that means she passed the roll and doesn't suffer the ill effects of the Pitfall Trap. So that's just gone, and that means the battle can commence as is. I believe you get to finish the current round you're part of before you shuffle in the turns of the enemies. Actually, I better check, because maybe they just go straight to the end. But Dongar still has one action left, either way. Unfortunately, she's got range zero on all of her attacks, and if she moves, she's out of actions. So I think she's just going to have to stay there. I could technically move and force some of the enemies to hit her with her good defense. Actually, that's not a bad idea. Yeah, we're gonna move there and make her be a bigger threat to the enemy. Ah, scratch that, I double checked, and the round immediately ends when there's new enemies to be put into the marching order, which is the initiative cards. 
you do not do the normal end of phase steps where you roll for the event which is how wandering monster tokens or the echo token might move so it's purely you take your initiative cards you add in the monster's presence in this case it's stabber and wolf riders and you shuffle and you get a new initiative order and the new round begins immediately so uh, that could be better or it could be worse for Dongard. Again, that's the tanky person. So of all the people to be in there surrounded by enemies, that isn't so bad. There's no model limit for each section of a tile, by the way. So you just have to work with it if too many enemies swarm. And they go by AI cards like in the original. So uh, the Wolf Riders are going to be going first. I'll put it up here so you can see the order for now. Well, isn't that just my luck? <laughs> okay, so Dongard's going last. That's wonderful. So, just quickly, you go by the AI on the bottom. If they have this symbol, it means the first time you would kill them, they get frenzied, which changes these. They're, they become more erratic, but then you have to kill them again. So that's just what that means. Prior to that, they follow these symbols, which I'm going to need to look out, because both of them use them. Um, the second one, actually, is retreat, for sure, because I already had that one looked out. The axe on the stabbers is just your basic aggressive card. I'm going to need to look out the other one though. In fact, let's just do this. So we've got a little pile of AI cards here. We look for the symbol that's matching. There it is. It's opportunistic. So you work your way down this. They will eventually find something they can do. So attack hero in the same zone. Nope. Charge. Hero with the most wound cards. Well, they're all at zero, but he can certainly charge. How much do they move? They move four. Well, he's definitely going to charge. So he is going to make it into Dongard right there and that concludes the card because they just do one thing on each so that is him done all the stabbers activate simultaneously I'll leave that card out because I don't need it and as I say they are using the aggressive one which is attack hero in same zone nope charge an unengaged hero if there is an engaged hero they'll then do that but there isn't and then finally they'll just move towards the closest hero if they're that far away so two of these are making it onto Dongard and no matter which way these move they're still one away so that is the enemy turn down, done now i get to decide what i'm doing with fire soul skull splitter dawn guard in that order ah how could i almost forget that when an enemy makes a charge they get a free attack out of it usually they only do one thing but the charges move plus attack uh we'll just do the two stabbers first they're all and the wolf rider they're all hitting dawn guard you just have to roll defense dice, their attack automatically is a success, as it were. So, stabber number one, looking for six, but you're adding two, she got six anyway. The two is coming from her stat card, again, just as a reminder, second stabber, plus the two, that is six. Now she's needing eight, though, so that is less likely. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Six, oh, plus her two, she actually rolled perfect there. Was that perfect three times in a row? Okay, so, that's the charge resolved. And now I can pick what I'm doing with people, starting with Fire Soul, who has range 2 on her basic attack and range 1 on Conflagration. It doesn't hit every enemy in the zone, I think. Oh, or does it? Maybe it does. No, it doesn't. I don't, I don't believe it does. All right, well, anyway, she's activating, and she's adjacent to this. Uh, do we want to just go after the Stabbers first? I would say yes. So, she's going to use Ember... On one of the two stabbers on that tile with Dongard, they're both identical, so it doesn't really matter. Again, if you're attacking, it's roll 2d6, trying to beat, or equal or beat, sorry, their target number, TN, which in this case is a 6. And, well, that's either a 6 or a 4. So, you know what, let's count it as a 6, just so we can go through what happens when you actually are successful. Although her passive would kick in. If I, or sorry, her, yeah, give me fire. I could kick that in there if I wanted to, but just to talk through an attack, let's say that landed on the 6. So it landed, that means that you've hit, you then roll their damage die. Oh, actually she had plus one to Ember anyway, so it would have hit either way. Her damage die is a d4. You roll that, you compare it to their toughness stat, I think it's called, which in this case will be a three. And she actually did roll a four. If you equal or exceed their toughness, it's a crit. If you don't, it's just a bog standard hit. In this case, it is a crit because she rolled a four on it. You go by the bottom number on a d4 if you aren't aware. So you look at the card for Ember, there's what it would have done if she just got a hit with it, would have set it on fire. But because she got a crit, she's dealing it one wound and setting it on fire. And it would have bonuses if she was already hitting someone who was on fire. So they need two hits to die, from what I remember. Uh, yep. So we'll just put one wound 
roughly there, plus a fire token. That fire token means when the round ends, it dies, because the fire token deals one damage, and then you take it away. For her other action, let's set the wolf rider on fire. I think that's a good idea. I can't do ember again, but what I can do is spend one of her two fate. So you just take it, flip it over, to do conflagration, which is what I'm going to do. It's range one, uh, and it's just rolling to try and apply a status effect. We're looking for eight, and there's no plus to this, unfortunately. And that is a miss. That is a five. Will I do her passive? I have missed an attack. Um, yeah, I'm going to. I'm going all in. She's spending her other fate to force fire to be on the wolf rider. So that is a, an effective turn, sort of. I mean, the first action was pretty good, the second one not so much. So with Skull Splitter, this is where it's going to get a little messy. He needs to be on the same tile, or the same zone rather, to attack. So he's going to have to use his first action to move, and that's going to make this a little difficult to fit in, but we'll just have to shift him like that a little bit. And his second action is going to be to spend one fate, and I'm going to just do a straight up finisher on the Wolf Rider because I'm scared of it. So, still rolling 2d6, still looking to beat 8, and well, let's see if it happens first of all, to see if he actually lands the hit. Well, yep, that's a, that would be 10, so he's landed the hit, he rolls a d8 for his damage, it's a d8. And that is a six. What's the toughness of the Wolf Rider? It's only three. So he actually got a crit against it. So if we just look at Finisher here, he got a crit, so he just dealt two wounds. That means that he reaches the point where he would normally die, but what happens instead is he gets, I think it's called a Wounded Token, and his AI changes to Frenzy because he goes nuts. Frenzy is just all-out charges, basically. That's the Frenzy card right there. So he's now more aggressive, but now if he takes two wounds, he dies, and he's taking another one at the end of the turn, thanks to the fire. Uh, I think I'm going to spend another fate, and I'm going all out on the resource immediately, to do Frenzied, so that I can do an extra action. Once per round, Skull Splitter can spend fate to perform an attack. I'm going to do it. We're going all out, and he's going to hit one of the little guys. Uh, the one that isn't on fire, because he's dead already. So, just trying to beat six, and he's got plus two to this. Well, oh, I was forgetting that if ever you're rolling the 2d6, as long as it's a successful roll, i.e. if you're trying to beat 6, as long as they add up to 6 or more, if it's doubles, it's an automatic crit. Totally forgot that. Uh, either way, he definitely hit that time. So this is a d8 again. Uh, yeah, an 8 will do it. So he got a crit again. A crit on Whirling Dervish, which is his bog standard attack, is one wound. The enemy, uh, he moves, then the enemy moves, I believe, or vice versa. So let's push this one uh, over here, deal one wound to him, and he'll follow. He'll, to get off of that very busy tile, he'll follow them and try to be a distraction over here. So finally, I've got Dongard. She's the last in the marching orders. Um, she doesn't need to hit the stabber that's, sorry, it's been pushed to be away from the zone a little bit, but that stabber's dead when the round ends. If she can do one damage to the Wolf Rider, it will also die to the fire at the end of the round, so that's my goal here. She's got a basic attack, it's a shield bash. Um, also, usually enemies get attacks of opportunity if you try and walk away while they're alive. Dodges, like the one that Skull Splitter still just did, does not trigger that. So, she'll attack as her first action. Shield bash, 2d6, as always, against the Wolf Rider, though she's trying to beat 8. It's plus 2 to the roll, though. Oh, that's a swing and a miss. So that is up to five in total, which is not good enough. Would she use Righteous Zeal? Is it worth it? Oh, also, as part of Shield Bash, she can actually be placed in an adjacent zone as well for free. I want her to stay there, though, to take some hits. Is it worth spending one of her fate? Yeah, because she, she's got a high chance of passing defense rolls, so she she should get her fate back pretty easily. Yeah, for her other action, I'm going to spend fate and do Righteous Zeal. I'm doing it into the doggo again. No plus to this, though. So it's just rolling. Eight. Did it. Doesn't matter whether it's a hit or a crit, it's doing one damage regardless. But if it is a crit, she gets fate back. So it's worth rolling. It's on a d8, and she's got to beat three or better. Three or better. 
so she'll get that fate back immediately. She does a wound to this. It doesn't technically die yet, but we're actually at the end of the round. Although, I'm going to go double check every step you do at a proper end of the round, just so we keep it right. You do definitely proc fire tokens, though, amongst other things. So, at the end of the round, those fire tokens proc and deal one wound to anything on fire. So, this gentleman, oh wait, no, sorry, it was this one he's technically in a different zone. He burns to death because of the fire proccing on him and dealing him his second wound. They have two. The wolf, who has always, who has already been wounded, takes another wound and that means he also is fully defeated now, but he might return later. Or, you know, a similar enemy type, so we can remove all those tokens as well. If there was any counters or anything, you would time them down by one. That's a similar thing to what existed before. If the Echo Token is not on or adjacent to a tile occupied, you would move it one. It doesn't summon monsters in the same way it did in the original, that is these tokens that do that now. On that note, you have to roll a d6, on a 1 or a 2, those are moving. They are not moving this turn, so we got lucky. And with that, a new round starts, you shuffle the initiative deck, and you go at it. So as I shuffle the initiative cards here, Fire Soul gets back one fate, because an enemy burned to death, if one or more. So even though two of them technically did, she still only gets the one fate, but that's still pretty good. Alright, I've given them a good shuffle. The enemy oh, I've also forgotten to take out the Wolf Rider card, so we'll have to remove that when it gets drawn. Dawn Guard's going first, Fire Soul's going second, the Stabbers are going third, and the Wolf Rider's card I forgot to take out, so Skull Splitter going last. Now we can start speeding up a little bit, because we've got the flow down, hopefully. Dawn Guard is going first, she's currently... Unoccupied in that square, so she'll have to move first. Let's move and help Skull Splitter, and we'll just do our basic strike into the one that's already got one wound. Looking to beat six. She got six on the double, well, sorry, equal to or beat. I keep saying exceed, but no, equal to is fine. And this is just our shield bash, so it's just a d6 for damage. A two is not good enough, so it's just a bog standard hit, which is just a push. Unfortunate, but hey, we'll, we'll do a push. And that is her turn. So Fire Soul, who's still technically just in the starting tile, which is one zone. She's got range 2 on her basic attack. So she'll start with that and she'll try and set this little fella on fire. Isn't she nice? Well, she's definitely doing it with that. So we still need to roll a d4 though, because it might do a crit. A crit would be perfect. Nah, she rolled a 1. So it just sets him on fire. I say just. That's still pretty bad for him. He's on fire for her other action. Uh, she'll have to do a move, I guess. Yeah, she'll just she'll just do a move into the room. She's not in the same zone as him, so he'll have to do a charge against her. Not that that matters. And yeah, it's the stabber's turn. So if they're already on the same tile as an enemy, they're just going to attack. I believe if there's two enemies, you go by the higher initiative, or maybe you get to choose. Well, I would prefer they're attacking Dongard. So let's do that. Um... Yep, so don't guard defense. That's five plus two is six, seven. She's fine. This one's doing a charge and is also going to attack. She's fine again. And this one who's on fire, and that's a bit worse because it's going to attack Fire Soul, whose defense doesn't have any bonuses at all. <laughs> oh, well. I think if you roll Snake Eyes, you get um, one fate back as a uh, kind of, okay, you did terrible, here's a consolation prize. But yeah, so that means the enemy hit, so now we have to look at their card. <laughs> they finally landed a blow. And in this case, it's just simply a wound. So, we'll take a wound card. There's a Grievous Wound side, but this is just that side. She has three health remaining, so not so bad. And now Skull Splitter gets to split some skulls. <laughs> Let's do Whirling Dervish on the wounded one that moved in. That's a hit, and it's a d8 for damage, plus two to this. Oh, sorry, it was plus two to that roll, sorry. Either way, it's a crit, which would be a wound and push, and he can move, so dead. Splatted. Does he want to move? Yes, he's going to move onto his tile to help out Fire Soul. And... Uh, yeah, he'll use his last fate. Well, he doesn't really have such... Ah, uh, he will. Why not? He'll use his last fate to do finisher on the one in there. Because the movement was free as part of his ability. Got to beat six. He sure does. D8 for damage. Got to beat three or better. <laughs> That's two wounds. The fire was irrelevant. 
In hindsight, though, maybe should have tried to let him burn to death because then one fate would have been given back to Fire Soul, but oh well. And that is the end of the round. There's still one stabber left, so the combat is ongoing right there. And that means there's no burns to proc or anything. There's no tokens to remove. It's straight to does the markers activate in the event phase? Nope, and that's still adjacent to our on. Oh, no, actually, if it's supposed to be on as well, I guess it comes into here. But it doesn't do anything again. It, it can do stuff, but not currently. We have one stabber left to deal with, and then we are dust. We are gone. We go back to exploring. Please don't go first. All right, Skull Splitter's going first. Dongard, the stabber who hopefully be dead by then, and finally fire soul. So, Skull Splitter, you're in the wrong tile, so you're going to have to move for your first action, and then you're going to attack. Six is good enough. You hit him. Plus it was plus two, I keep forgetting. D8. You critted him. With your basic attack, that is one wound, plus you can move and he can move, or be pushed, rather. He'll stay where he is, but Skull Splitter will move here to prep for travelling in that direction. And then hopefully Dongard's just going to get the kill here with our Shield Bash. Not if you roll double ones. That's rough. So yeah, she has both her fate anyway, she didn't use them. Um... Well, I guess she'll use one of those, since she passes her defense rolls pretty often, as her other action, to do a real quick Righteous Zeal. It's, there's no additional. She missed. She actually missed again. You should be ashamed. That's rough. That means the stabber gets to attack you. At least if you block it, you're, this is her block roll. Yeah, okay, you blocked it. <laughs> you get your fate back. But that's still pretty embarrassing. Alright, Fire Soul will do an Ember. And this will hopefully just essentially end the combat. Not if you roll a 3. Is there a plus to it? Oh, it's plus 1, which is 4. That's not good enough. Uh, as her other action, she's just going to move. She can move up to 3, so I'm going to put her right here, ready to explore when we're done. That unfortunately means we're going to need to do another round to finish off this combat, because uh, the little guy just wouldn't die, but hey. Event. Ooh, it happens. Okay, that means we need, need to cover this. So, they have numbers on them. You roll for direction and then move two hexes on the board towards it. If they touch a tile, that spawns a Wandering Monster. Or rather, you draw a card from the Wandering Monster deck. It isn't necessarily one of the Wandering Monsters. So we'll start with this one. Six. One, two. If they go off the table, they disappear. If at any point there's none left on the table, you spawn one back. Or maybe all four back. I'll need to check that. Top left. Uh, just one die. Five. We're getting very lucky here. Top right of the table, which is way up there. Four. That's worse. Oh, if they cross a treasure token, they take the token and have the treasure on them. Two. That one is almost off the table. It's actually on the clearing guards. That's awkward. So that's pretty good, though. That spread them far away from me. All right. Let's end this combat. Skull Splitter's going first. An awkward situation. Although, should I just trust Dongard can do one wound this time? I'm gonna. So Skull Splitter is gonna move uh, one... Does that count as one zone or is this also a zone line? I would presume that's also a zone line, so we'll put him here and just say his turn is good. And then Dongard, don't embarrass yourself. Plus, does, does her basic attack? Yeah, it's plus two. Okay, it hits. You need to get a crit to make it actually kill, though, and a one isn't going to do it. That's just a bog standard shield bash, so you're pushing him away, which isn't good enough. Uh, and then she's going to move, I guess, and go one, two, which is, again, awkward. And the little beastie's going to charge, but he's got a charge to range of two. So you actually can't get to them this turn. Fire Soul's going to need to try and set him on fire with Ember. Good enough. D4 for damage. Although it doesn't matter, because he's still just going to burn. Yep. It would apply a burn. I'm just going to end my turn without doing the... Well, a new round's going to start anyway, so she might as well explore. So sure, but I'll, I'll handle that after a quick cut. She does apply burn, but we do a new round, so he's going to burn to death anyway. He's not going to get to activate again, so we'll just remove him and populate with the new card. And to show you that it's true random, before I populate it, I will drop from the... Oh, the Wandering Monster card is in the way. Because we're in a trail, so we're drawing a clearing. Top of the deck. Oh, it's a question mark. So that might mean that we have to do... Oh, actually, I think I can use one of my magic staves to make it a path. I'm going to have to look into that, because otherwise we're going to have to go all the way back. Which would be very awkward, but 
So there's just a, a blank room there for us with some kind of challenge. So it seems like you can only use the party item that changes a dead end into a pathway if it's this type of dead end. At least as far as I can tell, so I think we're going to have to backtrack. But, first of all, got to draw an aspect challenge card because we found a question mark. Oh, this could actually be apropos. Draw a trail card and place the corresponding, corresponding tile so it's touching any edge of the current tile. Models can move between the two tiles as though they were connected by a portal. I swear to you, I did not cheese the deck. That is the top card and it is perfect because it means we're not stuck here now. So we have to draw a trail card and resolve that instead. So it's actually a thin pathway. Okay. I thought that was another dead end. I was going to scream. So that means it's going to have to be like that. So, okay. That means that we're going to cross the treasure token which is just going to go on the blue marker. Again, just as a reminder, normally that would just mean you, uh, whoever has these treasure tokens puts ex extra tokens in the treasure bag for when you finish the adventure. For the purposes of his demo, just because I want to see treasure cards, if we get that, which we're going to because it's a tiny room, I'm just going to draw a treasure card just so we can see what some of the treasure looks like. But again, that is not how it works. So because there was no enemies, that means that round that was going would technically end. So at this point, that stabber would burn to death. And then we do an event roll. Oh, and presumably the echo token falls whoops, onto this tile here. Like that. And that rolled off camera, but I assure you it was a three. So the event does not happen and the wandering monster tokens do not move. I think the echo token moves regardless. I might be incorrect about that. Actually, now that I've said it, I think I am. So let's just leave it where it is. Doesn't matter anyway, because there's no enemies currently. So we just need to start a new round with just our team. I could technically use a uh, campfire at this point or whatever to try and replenish fate. I'm going to make the next fight harder on purpose by not doing that. Although Skull Splitter will get back some if he takes damage and he can take six hits. That's pretty good. Dawn Guards first, Skull Splitter and then Fire Soul. Although we're going to immediately have to shuffle probably because I'm sure there'll be combat. So Dawn Guard, let's move. She can move two. One, two. And she can move again. She can only move one, because she can't do an explore action as part of the move. She'll take that treasure, so again, this is not how it's done, but I'm going to draw a treasure card just so we can see what some of the treasure cards in this game look like, because I believe the treasure in the original was somewhat of a contentious issue for being kind of little in upgrades. So, there we go, I shuffled the deck. A battered shield increases hero's resilience value by one. The next time this hero fails a defense roll, discard the card. So she's now got a three bonus to her defense until such time as she fails a defense roll. That is pretty good, but again, this was normally stuff you would get after the delve. Skull Splitter, he'll do a move. He moves two as well, unfortunately, so he's right there. And then he'll move again and be right there. And sadly, I don't really want Fire Soul to be the one to explore, so for her turn, she's just going to move on to this tile and do nothing. So we'll just do the end of the round. Nope. Not activating. I'm going to double check if the echo follows even if you pass the event roll. And it absolutely does. So it would have been there, so it's now on this tile. One behind us. And it's a new round. So shuffling the initiative cards. Again, it's just my team. But we're going to immediately be doing an explore. Hopefully, it's not Fire Soul first. Perfect. Okay. So Skull Splitter, Dawn Guard, Fire Soul. Skull Splitter's first action is an explore. So we're going to have to draw a clearing because we're in a trail currently. Hope it's not a dead end. Oh, okay, what is this? So there's two stabbers and the wandering... Oh, there's a wandering monster. And then there's also tertiary stabber times two. So I think that's related to the echo token because it's tertiary. So I think two stabbers are appearing where it currently is. So that'll be two more there. All right, so I'll need to look at that tile. But wandering monster deck is here. I'll do this on camera to prove it. There is blanks in here that won't actually be nasty monsters. It could be something else. Just the wind. Discard this card. We got lucky. There's no hand monster or weird vulture skeleton appearing for now. Just when you thought it was safe from wandering monsters. Well, so I've placed it out. Had to enter from this side. That's what that circle means. So it had to be placed like that. We didn't get a Wandering Monster where it said Wandering Monster. Fantastic. However, I drew the trail cards for the two exits here. 
after placing the stabbers. Tertiary does mean you place it where the echo token is, so two stabbers have appeared behind us as well, so it's a flanking attack, I guess. But the trail I put over here crossed over one of the Wandering Monster tokens, which means we need to draw from the deck again. It could still be nothing. I'm not going to shuffle it. I'm doing it because I just did for the card we drew. A much higher chance of this is actually a thing. Oh, and it is. It's the Grief Hawk who does two wounds if he lands a hit and needs a nine. That's scary. Okay, well, that's going to go in the marching orders. Where is the model for that? There it is. This token goes away. Horrific Beast appears instead. Wonderful. So, just when you thought it was safe. But we need a new marching order. We also need the Stabber card back into here as well. And we shuffle for this new dangerous round. And then technically these cards would go away. That's the trail cards. Oh, we also need to draw a aspect battle. Sorry, I forgot. I'll we'll do that before I actually reveal what the order is after I shuffle it. There. Shuffled aspect battle. Protect the flag. When enemies within two zones of the enemy when sorry, when yeah, when enemies within two zones of the enemy with the marker token suffer one or more wound results. From a hero attack, roll a d6, on a 6, discard the wound token. Oh, roll a d8 for every enemy, re-rolling ties, give the marker to the enemy with the highest result. Okay. So it's a d8 they said, right? Uh, this stabber, 1, that stabber, 5, that one, 1, won't bother re-rolling that tie, 3, because we already have a 5, and then the wandering monster is a 2, so it was the 5, so it's 1 down here. I will need to look out that marker or try and find it. Um, you know what, I'll just give him a timer token just to to do that. So if any enemy takes one or more wounds in the same zone as him on a D6 result of a 6, it's ignored. Okay, fair enough. That's not so bad. Let's see what the initiative order is, speaking of things potentially being terrible. The Grief Hawk is going first. Great. Skull Splitter going second. That's pretty good. Fire Soul going next. That's okay. Then the Stabbers, and then finally Dongard. That's not bad, because that means Dongard's going to take some hits, and she is buffed right now in defense. Oh, so as we begin this combat round, technically this is for the uh, area here, the clearing. So it technically should have been out of these two people, and he rolled a 1, and he rolled a 5. So the one with the banner is actually that gentleman, that Stabber. Anywho, Griefhawk goes first. Follows the basic aggressive, which is attack here in the same space. Nope. Charges. How much does he move? He moves a ridiculous four. One, two, three, four. Still not good enough to actually get to us this round, though, so that's good. So his turn is done. Skull Splitter. Dare I go after... Hmm. Dare I go after something called the Grief Hawk. It's a good way to get his... Fate back. Um, yeah. Hmm... Is that a dumb idea? Yeah, so let's do it. First action, move onto same tile as Griefhawk. Second action, Whirling Dervish. He needs to get a 9. That would be a 5 plus 2, so 6, 7 is not good enough. He has whiffed. Next up in the order is Fire Soul, so we'll just move this way a little bit. She's going to deal with these people back here. So she'll start with an Ember on this one. 5 plus 2 is a 6, that's just good enough. Looking for a four. A three is not good enough, right? Oh no, three is good enough. Three is good enough. So that is one wound plus a burn. So you are already dead, technically. And then she will spend her other... Her last fate, currently. And she will do Conflaguration on that one. It's a hit. There is no damage roll. It just sets them on fire. And we'll get one fate back when he burns to death. That's our turn. Now the stabbers activate, so they're both going to charge onto this tile. So let me just move these two back. And they're going to attack. There we are. Uh, this one is going to move... How much do they move? They move two. He is going to go one, two. I guess I get to choose. Actually, in those tiebreaker situations, is there an uh, initiative on these... I vaguely remember that kind of mechanic in the original Bardsome, but I don't see an initiative value or like an aggro value on any of these hero cards. So I guess I get to choose if it's equidistant. Oh, actually no, there is tiebreakers on the cards. Unengaged hero, well what if they're both engaged? Just says engaged hero. So, okay. And then the one with the banner, he reaches Skull Splitter. 
So, bunch of attacks to do. Let's do Skull Splitters first. I kind of want him to fail it. Because I want him to get his... Oh, that's not going to fail it. <laughs> he passed. He doesn't get any bonus to his defense, but that's still six or more. So, all these three are going to hit Dongard, who's currently rolling 2d6 plus three. So she needs to roll three or worse on two dice. First attack. <laughs> Barely. Second attack. She rolled Snake Eyes. She actually did. Okay. Well, that means the battered shield is gone. And it means she failed her roll. Because it's, yeah, it's two plus... Yeah, she did. Uh, can she do anything about that? Yeah, actually, hang on. To stop her battered shield breaking, she'll spend fate on her passive. Shield of Faith does no damage. Last one. Five, six, seven, eight. More than enough. Once per round, if she passes her defense roll, she gets fate back, so she immediately got it back. Hopefully that was done correctly. That is the round. Oh, no, sorry, no, it's not. Dongard gets to go. She is going to swing with Shield Bash into this one. That's a hit, and it's D6. Yep, D6, we'll just roll this for damage. Three is good enough that it does a crit, which is one wound and a push. Push. That also means he's dying of fire at the end of the round as well. Her other action... Oh, as part of that, she is allowed to do... Uh, no, she's not. Yeah, bef no, it's before resolving the attack. So technically I've missed my opportunity. So I'll stay where I am. Um, I'll spend one fate on Righteous Zeal for her other action and strike the one that came in behind her there. That's a hit, and it's an automatic crit because of doubles. So it does one wound, replenishes one fate. She's doing real well. So that's one wound to him. Now that it's the end of the round, burns to death, burns to death. Because one or more enemies burn to death, Fire Soul gets a fate back. And then we roll for the event. Again, trying to remember everything. No event, but this Echo Token moves regardless of the event result. So that's there. And then a new round starts. So as you can see, we are almost out. An explorer there will definitely get us out. Well, it'll put us on a tile, but it will be a tile that will be the exit. We just have to survive this combat and then get to that one. I'm shuffling the initiative cards. Consider them shuffled. Stabber is going first. Skull Splitter, Fire Soul, the Grief Hawk, and Dongard last. Well, the Stabber is just immediately going to stab at Dongard, so she's definitely blocking it and already has her full fate, so that's fine. Oh, the one over here is going to attack Skull Splitter. Totally forgot about him. Just barely, he survives the hit. Again, I kind of wanted him to fail it so he'd get some fate back, because his turn's not going to be that bombastic now, but oh well. So that's them done. Skull Splitter's turn. Um. He'll hit the, the little goblin to try and get rid of that banner. He does land the hit on a d6, it doesn't count. It does count. His damage roll is a d8. A 4 is good enough that it's a crit, so it's a hit. He's allowed to move and he pushes them. So he'll push them ooh, over here. They take one wound. And they're all on that tile, just to be clear. So he's going to move here to force the Griefhawk to follow him. Because I think that's probably a good idea, since the Griefhawk gets to go before Dongard. Uh, for his other actual action, he can't really do anything, unfortunately. So he'll just burn a turn. Or burn an action, rather. For Fire Soul's turn, she will set the little stabber on their space and on fire with Ember, hopefully. Yep, that'll do it. Uh, D4 for damage. A crit will just kill it. Nope. But it's already gone, so it's burning to death at the end of the turn. For her other action, she is going to spend her other fate on Conflagration. Oh wait, it's only range 1, it's not range 2. She can't reach the Griefhawk. If she moves away, she gets attacked. <sighs> she'll just have to wait. I, I don't want to send her in, she's wounded. So yeah, she'll just have to waste her turn. The Griefhawk moves up to four and charges. He is attacking Skull Splitter in the face. Defense roll, got to roll a nine. He actually did it, he, he got a 10. My man, although again, I would prefer if he actually took a little bit of damage, but that's pretty amazing. Dongard, uh, let's see, Shield Bash. Wait, this one's already dead though, but she kind of has to. Yeah, okay, she'll shield bash this one just to get some free movement out of it as well. Four, but you add on two for shield bash, so it hits. 
the crit roll is a d6. It is a crit, so it just kills him. That's not actually a good thing. I wonder if that's optional, like to resolve the crit, because I didn't want that. I wanted them to burn to death, so we got Fire Soul's passive to kick in. She's allowed to move as part of Shield Bash, so I'm moving into here. And that means she's going to be tanking the hits from the Grief Hawk now. She has another action. I'm going to spend on Righteous Zeal again. So, uh, yep, so it's just a straight up two dice, looking for nine, though. With no additions, so that's a swing and a miss, sadly. And that is the round. Do the Wandering Monster tokens move? They do. Uh, there should be one over there off the table. Six. No, it actually comes back. It's going to be there. And the two to the left of the camera that I know you can't see. One of them is off the table. If this is a five or six, the other one's off the table. Okay. So there's only one left on the table because the other one was what spawned in the Grief Hawk. Uh, the Echo Token's already on a player, so that doesn't move. That's that round over. And once again, shuffling the initiative cards. Skull Splitter. Dongard, good start. Uh, Grief Hawk, the one remaining stabber that has the banner, and Fire Soul last, huh? Okay. Skull Splitter's on the right space, he's just going to start swinging. So, swinging into the Grief Hawk, looking for Knight. Plus two to this though, and he doesn't need it. So that is a hit. He is rolling d8 for his damage roll. What is he needing to beat? An eight is going to beat it. He needs to beat a four, so it's a crit with Whirling Dervish. He does one wound to it. He can push it, and he can move. He's going to push it. He, uh, who's going next? Dongard? He's not going to push it, but he is going to move. He's going to move on to the Stabber, because he wants to distract the Stabber so the banner isn't on him. And that's one wound of the two, and then he frenzies, and you have to kill him again. Uh, of his three, actually? How much health does he have before he runs away? Oh, no, it is two. Oh, sorry, before he frenzies. It is two. Uh, he does have another action, but he has no fate, so he can't do anything. So he's just ending his turn there. Dongard is going to shield bash the Grief Hawk. Right in the teeth, hopefully. Looking for nine, but plus two to the roll. Seven, eight, nine. Ooh, well done. D6 for damage. Not good enough. So it's a bog standard hit. It is not a crit, which means it does no damage and just pushes. Uh, do I want to push? No, I kind of want to take his hit. No, no, I'm not going to. I am going to spend their last fate currently, though, to do a righteous zeal as our other action. Ooh, well, that replenishes a fate for sucking. <laughs> but other than that, nothing achieved. The Grief Hawk activates and attacks, so plus three to this roll, got to beat nine, or equal nine. Five, six, seven, eight, failed. Battered Shield gets broken, so I'll just turn that over. And she takes two wounds, which in turn makes Righteous Zeal better. Uh, oh, wait, I have one fate left. I could choose to ignore the damage. Hmm... Yeah, I'm going to spend the fate to ignore the damage, actually, so it doesn't break the shield. So she's out of fate again until she passes some defense rolls, so stop rolling snake eyes, please. But yeah, that'll do that. The stabber is going to hit Skull Splitter. Please fail your defense roll, Skull Splitter. He failed it. He failed it by one. Aha! He takes one wound, which means he gets one fate back. He obviously has one wound, but he has five health remaining. He is very tanky in that regard, anyway. And then finally, Fire Soul, we are setting that bird on fire. Ember, go. Yeah, you are. D4. Four, which is enough. So not only are you set on fire, but you just got your second wound, which means you are now frenzied. So that goes away. You get your frenzied token, and you become very, very angry, which is good. She's got another action left. Uh, you can't inflict fire on something that's already on fire. I think she's just going to wait there. Yeah. Yep, she'll just wait there. So, end of turn event. They don't activate. This prox deals one damage to him. He has one health remaining on the Grief Hawk. And the new round begins with... Oh. Uh, can you see these? Go back a little bit. Ember Soul, Fire Soul rather, is going first. Skull Splitter. The Stabber, Dongard, and the Grief Hawk last. Well, hopefully they're not going to get the opportunity. 
immediately opening up with Ember to try and finish it off. Plus one to this roll. Not good enough. It's a seven. Um, she will spend her fate to do her give me fire. Set the bird on fire. It's dead at the end of the round. It means it's going to get one more swing in, but whatever. It also means she's got an unused action, so she'll just move into this tile here. <laughs> hiding behind the big strong lady. Skull Splitter is going to swing that Whirling Dervish at the Stabber. 5 plus 2 is good enough, and d8 for damage. That is good enough that it's a crit, and that deals one more wound. Oh wait, sorry, he ignores it on a 6. Okay, he's dead. The banner fell on that day. The day the music died. And he has one action left, and we know the Griefhawk is dead, so I'll do a movement action and go 1, 2 towards victory. And then the Griefhawk activates. Oh, sorry, no, Dongard activates. She might as well shield bash to try and shove it. Doubles, but it's a fail, so it doesn't do anything. Even with the plus two. She'll just stay there to take the hit. Can't do anything else. The Griefhawk attacks. Plus three to the roll. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yep, she lived. Gets one fate back. End of the round. Fire burns the Griefhawk to death. What a shame. And now we're actually out of combat as well. Do, or rather, does the one wandering monster token activate? Nope. This will follow us though onto here. And a new round begins. So we're back to just my three, although I was just thinking there, I have a sneaking suspicion. I had a quick look and I couldn't see it, but I have a sneaking suspicion when an enemy frenzies you clear their status effects, i.e. if they're on fire they would magically not be on fire. That rings a bell for the original bard song. I had a quick look and couldn't see that. If I've been doing that wrong, apologies. But hey, it expedites a potential end. So, it's going to be Dongard, Fire Soul, uh, sorry, uh, Skull Splitter, Fire Soul, Dongard in that order. And he is going to do a move, and then he is going to do an explore, and we'll just draw the card. So it's a clearing, and it's going to be the one that takes us to the end, as I stretch over the camera. What does it say? Oh, Flame Spitter, Flame Spitter, and Pack Master. That sounds bad, but it is going to be a card that takes us to the end, because it goes off the table. So I'll get that populated, and we'll get to see two more enemy types before the end. So it's going to be a bit harder to get a view of the top end of a table, but there's the trail card I did for that exit. It would go off the table, so it's just a dead end. We have our exit, as it were, and there's the enemies. So, Packmaster is scary. It's minus one to attack rolls for on or adjacent to his zone, so that's kind of scary. And the Flame Spitters retreat and set you on fire, so I'm going to get a taste of my own medicine, essentially. And they're both pretty hard to hit. First of all, though, we draw an aspect battle, see what's different. Flash fire, well I guess that's apt. Place six timer tokens on this card. At the end of each round, discard D4 of the tokens. If the final token is discarded, place a dead end on each trail that is connected to the current tile, excluding the tile the hero entered from. Then each model on this tile suffers burn. So because we're on the end tile, the only part of this that matters is once the, <laughs> the timer runs out, we're all going to get set on fire if we're not already on fire. So how many tokens was that? D... Oh, you discard D4, but you have six. So there's three, four, five, oops, four, five, six. I will try and remove them, or trying to remember to remove them, rather. Now I need to shuffle the initiative order, because a new round is starting, but we don't do the event phase, because it's just because enemies are now on the table. Well, the Flame Spitters are going first, so that doesn't bode well for Skull Splitter. Then Fire Soul goes. And I'm going to have to keep the initiative cards where I can see them, unfortunately. So I know it's a little awkward. Dongard, Skull Splitter, and then the big bad Pack Master goes last. Uh, if we come back here, maybe and pull back a little bit, just see more of the table then. So, the Flame Spitters want to retreat and then attack. So if they're on a tile or a zone, rather, with an enemy, they'll move away. Is the gist of it. So in the same zone as the hero, it moves up to its speed towards the nearest zone that does not contain the hero. And then it attacks. The closest hero. So, Skull Splitter's defense and he's looking for a 7. That is 5 and he gets no addition. So unfortunately, well, he gets a fate. But he also takes 1 damage. And is set on fire. So it's technically 2 damage. That's real bad. If it misses, it still sets on fire. How does that work? 
Okay, and then the other one can attack from where he is because it's range two. So second defense roll. That's a fail. He can't get double sound fired, but that's three wounds out of his six health. And then it is Fire Soul's turn, and she's gonna have to move. She moves three. One, two, three. That maybe face the enemy's deer. Ember's got a distance of two. I'm gonna set the uh, what's he called? The Packmaster on fire. With a seven plus one, that's eight. Just enough. Oof, good grief. Is it a crit? Four. You don't get any addition to that, right? That means she literally can't crit him. His toughness is too high. So that is just set on fire then, but that's what I wanted. Everybody's going to be on fire in the flash fire area. For her other action... She's only got range 1 on Conflagration, so... Yep, she can't do anything else. Oh, she can't anyway. I forgot she moved to get there, so that was her second action. Next up, Dongard is going to move for 2. 1, 2. And then she can't do anything else. She'll do another moving action, I suppose, and go 1, 2. And come in here and say, hello, I am the designated tank. Would you like to talk to me? Skull Splitter is activating, and you have to double kill him. No, you don't have to double kill him, but you do have to do three wounds. Oh, it's the same for the Flame Spitters, though. That's oof, boy. Okay, let's go all in on that Pack Master then. He's going to move on to the tower with the Pack Master. It's minus one to attack rolls, and he's going to spend one fate on Finisher. Five, six, seven. Eight because of the minus one is a miss. That's rough. Can you do anything about that? No. Well, in that case, he'll spend his other fate to do a bonus action with his frenzied passive. He'll just have to do his whirling dervish. So this is plus two. And five, six, seven. Not, not, not good enough. I see. We're gonna have to rely on the fire. And then the pack master goes. He just attacks. Oh, what does that symbol mean actually? Gonna have to look at that card. He might summon things. He is disciplined. Attack the hero in the same zone. Charge, charge, or move. Well, he's just gonna attack then. So he's disciplined, but then he goes nuts. Actually, no, he doesn't frenzy. Sorry. Yeah, so he just stays disciplined. Either way, defense roll, skull splitter. Oh, sorry. Yes, because he's on that tile. Nope. So that is one wound, and he's bleeding. Bleeding matters for wandering monster tokens. You can clear it by going to a campfire. So it's not going to matter for the rest of this one. So as this new round begins, D4 of these tokens go off this card. One. Well, that's good. Oh, sorry, he also... I forgot about the fire tokens. So one wound to the Packmaster, one wound to Skull Splitter. That means Skull Splitter has one wound left, but we have three potions, so when he would die, he does not, and he just heals to full. That is a, a resource that is in the full game if you're doing a campaign. Not something you want to frivolously get rid of. Uh, you know, just because he's so far away, I'll, I'll put his wound counters where I can see them. He needs two more on him. <clears throat> anyway, initiative. That is going to be Dongard first. It is going to be Fire Soul. It is going to be the Packmaster. Skull Splitter, and then the Flame Spitters last. Well, Dongard is... I'm going all in on this Packmaster until it's dead. In. Right there. And let's go for a... Shield Bash. Seven, eight, once you only add on one for Shield Bash is good enough. So it hit. Damage. Get a crit. No. No. Needs to be a five or a six to crit. Oh, that means it's just a shove. That's no good. I, I presume again I can choose not to do that. So, yeah, I'll just choose not to do that. That was a waste of a turn. Fire Soul will cast Ember from where she is. That's 10. She can't crit him, so we'll just go straight to Hey, You're on Fire again. Put it up there where I can see it. She's the only one who's going to be able to consistently damage him, I think, which is not good. For her other action, she's going to move up one, just to be there. Then it's the Packmaster. He is going to attack Dongard. She easily blocks him and gets a fate back as a result. Skull Splitter is... <laughs> In a bad way, 
Uh, is it once per round? No, it's just if he f fails a save. So he failed two there, so he should still have... He should still have two feet, I think. So we'll go with the finisher and then go with the Whirling Dervish. Roll well, please. Five, six, seven, eight. But it's not plus anything, so it comes down to a seven. And then the Whirling Dervish is plus two. That one he hit with, of course. And he got a crit with it. Okay, so he did one wound to the Packmaster. That's two. Oh, that means he's dead at the end of a round because the fire would kill him. In that case, we'll take advantage of the push. Get him pushed off to the side there and he will take advantage of his move as part of that and move onto that Flame Spirit to force him to move as well. He has one more action left because... No, he didn't because he missed the finisher. So, nope, he's done. And then the Flame Spitters, they are both going to back up which is really awkward. <laughs> they're going to back up and they're going to fire. And technically Flamespear and Dongard are equidistant. So I presume again I'm allowed to choose. If I'm not, it's not going to matter in the long run. Because I can just use the potions spammingly. Since this is a one-off. So we'll just have them hit Dongard. She's got to beat 7 twice. 7 plus 3. She beats the first. 4, 5, 6, 7. She beats the second just barely. So she lived. At the end of the round, the Packmaster takes his third damage from the burn he got. Get out of there. They're very annoying. Uh, was anyone else on fire? No. Let's just do the D4 of the flame tokens. Ooh, three of them. So a total of four of them gone. So very close to everybody burning, but that's fine. All right, let's take this to the end. To kill one of these things, I don't remember. I'll need to look at their stat card. We've shuffled. It is going to be... Skull Splitter first. It is going to be Fire Soul second. Then they go. How much? Oh, they've got three wounds each as well, and you've got a seven to hit them. Good grief. They are rough. And again, I didn't plan this that we would get such a rough room to end on. So, anyway, we're going to need this fire token, but not currently. Skull Splitter. He is going to move, and then he's going to attack. Simple as that. There we are. He still has one fate left, I think. So he will use that on a finisher and just try and absolutely murder one of them. And on a six is not good enough. He needed a seven. Ah, oh, why do you suck now? You were doing so well. For Fire Soul's turn, she's got range two on Ember, so she'll do it from where she is. Five, six, seven, eight. She makes it. She can crit them. Oh, she needs to get a four, but she can crit them. She got a four. So that's one wound and set one of them on fire. Uh, didn't really designate which one, but let's say the closer of the two, so I don't need to stretch as much. And for her other action, I'm trying to stick them in the corner. So she's going to move there. And then it's their turn. And unfortunately, well, can they retreat? Would I get attack of opportunity? What does it say on the retreat? The enemy's in the same space as a hero, or zone as a hero, rather. It moves up to its speed towards the nearest zone that does not contain a hero. If this enemy does not have enough speed to reach a valid zone, it does not move. And they move to... Uh, they can definitely move to the left of Skull Splitter. I don't know if I... I'm going to double check if I get an attack of opportunity on them. And unfortunately, enemies never suffer parting blows. It's only heroes. So they can successfully move over here. One of them is again burning to death. Oh, actually no, he's not going to die. He's going to be one away, but... Hopefully I can find another way to deal with a wound. Skull Splitter and Dongard are equally apart, so I'm going to have them shoot Dongard. Again, I'm not 100% sure I'm allowed to do that, but I don't see like threat value on their card to differentiate. What I think I have been forgetting is if multiple enemies are on the same zone, I think they get a bonus to their TN when attacking. But I forgot. <laughs> and I couldn't see it at a glance. Uh, anyway, so Dongard. That's a block on the first. And six, seven, eight, nine, block on the second. Then she gets to go, speaking of, she's going to walk onto them and just... Uh, well, actually, because she'll bash is that you move before you resolve, she actually gets a free move, so she might as well do that. Whoop. And she'll obviously be hitting the one that's one wind away from death. Seven, eight, nine, she hits it, but she needs a crit. So this needs to be a four plus. You suck. It's just a push, which I'm not going to resolve because it's, well, actually there is a reason to. I'm going to push onto Skull Splitter's 
space. Again, apologies for leaning over the camera. It's the end of the round, so I'll just move this fire token. He takes his second hit and is one away from death. And does the monster token move? It actually does. Two. It's on, it's on top of one of my card piles, but it's not going to bother us at least. All right. I hope this is it. I hope we can we can see this through to the end now. This last fight has been annoying because the numbers are so high to hit. Ugh, and they're going first. Then Dongard, then Skull Splitter, then. Oh, I forgot to do D4 of these. Is everyone on fire? You better believe everyone's on fire. Although, does it say everyone? Each model. So that would have been at the end of that round, I think, after effects. Hmm. So I think the one that was on fire would not have taken a wound, but everyone else would have. So this one's now wounded. That would have killed... Oops, as I hit the camera. That would have killed Skull Splitter, so I'll flip over one of the party's potions, which saves him from death and restores him to full health. And... That's that. So, they're both attacking. Can they flee if they're allowed to without opportunity attacks? They certainly can. One there, one there. And... Ooh, one of them has to hit Dongard. The other one technically doesn't. We'd be able to choose. That's one successful defense roll and one fail even with the plus three. Uh, Dongard will spend fate and ignore the damage. Why not? She'll shield bash into the one that's one away from death. Please kill this person. Oh, you rolled a double, but not... Well, with the plus two? Nope, needed a seven. Ah. Well, that was a free move, so she'll spend her last fate on Righteous Zeal, which is plus one because she's got a damage now. A damage card, rather. Yep, that's a hit. It does one damage regardless of whether it's a hit or a crit, so just be removing you if you don't mind. Good riddance. Skull Splitter is moving and attacking. Whoop, little friendle. Nice one damage you have there. Hopefully I'm going to give you two more soon. Uh, I don't have any fate, so it's just bog standard attack. Six, seven, eight. He does it just. D8. Nope, bog standard hit, which is just push and he can move. Um, yeah, he'll move him over onto this space. And then finally, Fire Soul will do Ember. That's basically her only option. It's a hit. Needs to get a 4 on this to do a crit. Nope, so it's just burn, but it's the end of the round anyway, so the burn converts to 1 damage. Plop. And does the event token move? It does. It's now on a different pile of cards, but still not a threat out of line of sight. This is it. I can feel it. He's got one health left. This is how it ends. But does he get to go first? No. Skull Splitter does. He could finish it. And then Dawn Guard. Oh, okay. You've got to do one win between all of you. Skull Splitter. Moving on to him. Attacking. Four, six, seven, eight. Does it just? Has to be a crit. Nope. So it would just be a push. Unfortunate. Don't guard. Uh, just has to do a shield bash. That's a hit. D6 for damage. Rolled a 1 as well. <laughs> that would just be a push. Not going to do that, so no turn. And then Ember. 6, 7, good enough. If she gets a 4, it's a crit. Nope, <laughs> that was a 1 as well. That was 3 1s on, t on um, 3 different denominations of dice. But still sets him on fire on just a bog standard hit, which means uh, he still gets to attack once and then he's dead. So this is the end. Six, seven, eight, she lived. So at the end of the round, he burns to death and after a rough final combat, we have made it. So hopefully that's given you a general overview of how Tale of the Forsaken Glade Bardsung's follow-up standalone expansion thing plays. It took a bit longer than I was expecting. Um, that last combat was rough. 
I do apologise for anything that was done incorrectly, although again, keep in mind that I've been blathering the whole time and using a better version of the rules. I'm almost certain I forgot a bonus enemies are supposed to have to their target number if there's multiple of them in the same zone as a hero. Beyond that, I uh, probably didn't keep track of fate precisely, and I'm pretty sure I must be missing something about getting to pick who the enemies target if there's multiple heroes in the same zone. I don't see anything on the cards with initiative mentioned, so I don't know. Maybe it goes by total health, because the AI cards don't say like most healthy in most of the time. I think there is a general AI matrix in the rulebook, however, that there might be a card for it actually. Uh, no, no, there is not. So it just mostly says unengaged hero or engaged hero. So there isn't a tiebreaker there. It doesn't say like most. Actually, in one instance, it does. Opportunistic says go after the target with the most wounds. That's the only example I could see at a glance. So either way, obviously, go to Steamforge directly for precise how to plays. This was just a general overview of how Bardsong played. If you want to see how the original Bardsong played, I have videos on that as well. And if you didn't see all the models in this demo prototype build, I did a separate unboxing on that. Thank you again to Steamforge for sending me this. I hope I at least did it justice in some fashion and didn't get too much wrong. Um, and for anyone watching this, Go check out the GameFound crowdfunding. It will be linked via a tracking link in the description box below. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. See you next time. It's time for now.